All right. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be looking at Daniel chapter 6 today, guys. Um, I hope you're having a blessed day and a wonderful day, guys. God is so good. He has such wonderful plans for us, and we just have to learn to to give ourselves over more fully to Him and walk more more truly in what it is that he has laid out for us and I know that's what's been working for me and it's what it's what will always work the more you give yourself over to God the more you deny the things of this world and pick up the things of God the more fruitful the more productive the more beneficial happy joyful all the adjectives that you want to be using on yourself and on your life they're all going to be there man and that's what's awesome about it anyways let me get into some prayer, and we're going to look at Daniel chapter 6 today, guys. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking me up today, Lord. Thank you for always being right there for us, Lord, when, when, we, when we're willing to, to finally turn away from all of this in the world and turn towards you. You're right there, Lord. You're right there to, to transform us, to renew us, to redeem us. I want to thank you, Father God, for this chance to lift up your word and to lift up your name, Lord, and to make use of this tool called YouTube and Facebook, to make use of it to further your kingdom, to make use of it to, to proclaim your name, to... to Make that salvation offer to work in that great commission that you have laid out before each and every one of us, Lord. Father God, I pray a hedge of protection and a blood covering over the lives of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. As always, I ask for this video to to please allow us to, to find enlightenment and allow the Holy Spirit to bring remembrance to us as we search out your word, as we seek out your word, Lord allowing us to be nourished and fed and driven and to have purpose. Now I pray all of this, Lord, in your holy and mighty name, in Jesus' name. Amen, guys. God is so good, y'all. He is. He is so good. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6, guys. Today, today is the other Daniel story that's just as well known as the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story. Maybe even more so, Daniel in the lion's den, as we would call it. Let's look at this, guys. The plot against Daniel is the heading on mine, chapter 6, verse 1. Let's go. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault, because he was faithful nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for thirty days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed 
and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within thirty days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petitions three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote, To all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. Amen, guys, huh? You don't... <laughs> You don't want to come up against one of God's chosen. It just ain't going to work out good for you, am I right? All right, guys, so let's jump back here to the beginning. Um, as always, guys, thank you guys for coming along today as we are gifted with a chance to be in God's Word again here, guys. Today, it's the sixth chapter of Daniel. I want to talk about what a great man of God Daniel was. And how we should seek to mimic, model, or, or follow just such an example. Verse 5 points to a beautiful truth in that it talks about how Daniel 
Daniel was so excellent a person, guys, that he met any imaginable standard you could throw at him. And knowing this, and perhaps also aware that Daniel's God, God Almighty, demands perfection, they sought to use his own faith and his own beliefs and his own standards to trip him up. And while that's kind of sad in one way and another way, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's something we should certainly seek to be able to have people say of us. Now, just as witnessed in Christ and how he prayed and how prayer was such a paramount part of right living for him, Daniel uses that exact same formula in his life. Daniel's second chapter found the young man praying. And decades later, here in chapter 6, we find the old man still at it. Daniel's prayer warrior ways are marked by standout features. Number one, personal faith. I would say that this is best exemplified by his continued praying three times daily towards his homeland from which he was taken captive. Number two, piety, holiness. All Daniel did exuded it. He could have grown weary or he could have grown tired or let's be honest, he could have grown prideful due to his position in this kingdom, but he didn't. Number three, the last one I want to share with you is, is his, his, his actions as an intercessor, as a prayer warrior. He was always praying, and he wasn't just praying vagaries. He was praying specifics. He had exact things that he was seeking to have done and to talk about and to pray about. We are called to live and act likewise, full of gratitude, specific in prayer, humble in self, and certain of God. Verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be over the whole kingdom. Daniel and God are the threads through this book, as little else is a holdover from chapter 5 to here in chapter 6. At this point, the kingdom is so large that the king has split up rule between these satraps who had a key task of collecting and delivering tributes. And this is a breeding ground for greed, sin, and, and untold abuses. Verse 10, let's look at that one. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Alright guys, so here first, let's talk, I didn't really write this down, but let's talk about this room that Daniel goes to to pray in, this upper room. It's, it's widely held that this was in fact a room that he specifically had built that just had a couple windows in it that always remained open and facing towards Jerusalem, his homeland, the place from where he was led away captive. All right? And so the wording here makes it clear that Daniel's prayer habits, guys, they are well known and they are certain and this makes him an easy target. But none of that matters because Daniel's faith is in God and he won't be shaken. See, Daniel is living up to the words of Solomon's prayer at the temple's dedication. Words that looked ahead that foresaw the chance of a people like those talked about here. And it enabled them to have a place or a home that they could always pray towards and look forward to. Being on his knees for these prayers points to humility and particularly, it points towards solemn words. As biblically speaking, regular prayer took place standing. Verse 12. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within thirty days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Alright guys, so we see this type of behavior still today. When an opponent has, a re has no real argument and they just seek to trip one up in their own words, 
these satraps push for the king to confirm his edict so as to really jam him up when it comes time to condemn Daniel, which is the point of everything they're doing here. Verse 14. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. It's one of the things that makes me like the king is that, that part right there, the way that it says that. It says that um, he was greatly displeased with himself. Now, you know, he could have just been mad at them for tripping him up. He could have been mad at anybody but himself. You know, he was a king. That's likely the way it normally went, but it wasn't. He was mad at himself because he should have known better. He should have known better. Almost at once, we see Darius, and he sees how dirty these people have done him. His own advisors have tricked him and deceived him, but he's mad at himself for letting this happen. Crippled by this te treachery, in a sense, but yet his loyalty towards Daniel remains solid and unshaken. And he immediately jumps to, what can I do now to help? Let's look at verse 16. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. So the king is utterly forced to comply with the edict, and Darius may have no physical avenues left, but we see him do what he can. And he takes his need to God. He's seeking intervention for Daniel, acting on his behalf trying to seek out whatever aid he can for this faithful and devout servant of God. Verse 17. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. So it's a common misconception, guys, in paintings and elsewhere that this was more of a cave, but this just isn't so. This was man-made, and it was a pit, one deep enough to offer absolutely no escape to either the individuals thrown into it or the lions therein. Verse 22. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. We know, Daniel, we know Daniel's name means God is my judge. And here, boy, does that prove to be true. Daniel is judged by God, and, and he is not found wanting. He is vindicated. He is vindicated, and he seems to have been able to have rested easier his night in the lion's den than the king or anyone else did outside of it. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 24, guys, last one I'm going to share with you today. And the king gave the command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Again, the bottom of the den pointing to this being a, a pit and not really a cave. Um, all right, guys, so Near East practices all throughout into antiquity almost to a T demand that those who would rally false charges face the punishment that they sought to have enacted upon others. Daniel's would-be accusers are treated in turn and they don't even make it to the floor before they are utterly ravaged and devoured. All right, guys, amen. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, guys, and I promise Father God wants us to be in his word. It says that he has no greater joy than to know that his children walk in the truth, man. And that's what this time here together is about. It's about taking the time to really get to know God through this love letter that he wrote to each and every one of us, guys. Um... Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it, guys. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, anything at all, drop that down here into the comment section, man. I want you guys to know, I love you guys so much. Father God loves you way more than that, man. But whatever you do, go out there 
Have a blessed day. Know how much Jesus loves you and tell somebody you see how much Jesus loves them. I can promise you this. Even if they heard it and they already know it, it won't hurt for them to hear it again. And there's a good chance that maybe the person you see and tell that to might be the first time they've ever been told. Or maybe it'll be the first time they really hear it. But just let them know how much Jesus loves them. Because he does, guys. He gave himself up for each and every one of us. Even with all of our mess that we have going on. I love you guys. God bless.